What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is TWA Motorsports and today, oh my gosh, it's not hot. So I know in all my videos I start out, it is crazy hot and uh, it's still warm and humid, but it's not unbearable. But today, of course, we are back on the golf cart. Now, this is not a golf cart only channel. Obviously, you guys came here for Trans Am Corvette truck stuff, but the golf cart is something that we love to drive and we want to make better. So this is what we are doing today. Um, and it's all gonna be in one video, it all won't be today, but uh, we are going to fix the windshield. Uh, I told you guys in the last video, my son, as you guys know, or may or may not know, he messed up the wheel. It was starting to come off. Uh, he kept driving it, messed up the studs, the wheel studs, which I got new wheel studs here. So uh, be fixing that. So we have to cut off the old lug nut in order to get the stud. Obviously we got to get the wheel off and replace the stud, but he also ran into a fence trying to avoid some glass and busted the front windshield as well as put a nice little ding right here or chip or whatever. This is fiberglass. So I guess he just scraped it up. I'm not really concerned about that, but uh, I do want to get a new windshield. So that is what is in that big box in the back. Obviously, I also showed you that I did put a seat on. So we've done a few things, and then I, I removed all the striping off the side, which took some of the clear, but I'm not really sure if it's worth painting right now since my son runs into stuff and breaks it. Probably not worth it. But I uh, also have a lift kit, which is what you see in the box. So today, windshield, lift kit, wheels and tires will be here tomorrow, all going to be in this video, guys. So I am super excited to get started. The very first thing we're going to start with is the windshield. I think it's pretty cut and dry, pretty simple to install. Um, this one just clips on really so I think we can probably do it in a couple minutes But I'm gonna go grab it out of the box and I did order a tinted one, which you will see uh, Let's start there Not two minutes, but it wasn't bad nonetheless. Uh, I did have to take these off a couple times because there is a film, obviously they ship it with so it doesn't get scratched, but guys, it looks a lot better. And this is the tinted version. I guess the clear one is really clear because this isn't that tinted to me, but uh, I'm used to, you know, limo tint. This is like, I don't even know, 70%. Not really tinted, it looks really black on their website, but uh, I did not have to use that bottom channel. It came with four or five more of those to do on the bottom. And honestly, this looks a little nicer. So on to the fun stuff, which is cutting off the old lug nut, getting the wheel stud replaced and starting on that lift kit. So guys, it is the next night and I went ahead and unboxed all of my front end components and the rear components. So this is the lift kit that we're gonna be using. It is a six inch lift. So I would love to show you the wheels, but you're just gonna have to wait till I get to that part because they are awesome. This thing is gonna look incredible. So anyway, I'm gonna jack this thing up and um, we're gonna go ahead and get the front off the ground. I'm gonna put some jack stands under it and we're gonna start tearing the front apart. Now that we've got it up in the air, the very first thing we need to take off is the front bumper. So that's just a couple Phillips uh, screws. We'll get it out of the way and then obviously we're gonna need to take the front tires off. So the next things that we have to remove once we get the wheel off is we need to get this center hub cover off, uh, which I've taken off the other side, and um, then there is a cotter key and a bolt in there so we can get this whole assembly out of the way. Next 
next thing we need to remove are the bottom of the shocks. You don't have to remove the top, just the bottom to get them out of the way. And hopefully we have enough room to slide them forward and get them off this stud. I think we will once we get, um, I'm just gonna thread that back on there for now, but once we get the rear, the bottom section dropped out, I think we'll be able to slide it back and get those out. If not, we may have to go ahead and take them off. So once we get that, we need to work on the spindle here. And it seems to be that 9 sixteenths, it's all standard, which is cool, but 9 sixteenths is a majority. So we're gonna take the top, uh, or sorry, the top and the bottom loose. And uh, actually, we may not even take this one loose. We may just take this guy and, uh, yeah, we're gonna take, we'll just take them all loose. It's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and get this spindle out of the way. You're also gonna have to pull out the cotter pins on the stabilizer steering piece here and take that off. So that is our kind of our next steps. I was unable to get this apart. I couldn't get this uh, drag link bar out, so I'm gonna have to use, uh, it just didn't have anything to put up against it. So I'm gonna knock these loose later. But our next step is we're gonna go ahead and take off the upper A-arm here. So just some 9 16 there's two bolts and two nuts on each side. Get this out of the way and uh, go ahead and set those aside because you will not be reusing these. So uh, that is our next step. Now the last thing that we need to uninstall is the um, leaf spring right here. So there are four bolts that hold it together and you can see those and you are going to be reusing these. So make sure you don't lose those. Nine sixteenths, we're just going to knock those out real quick and then this will all come out of the bottom. that all the way and you notice that I had to take an additional plate off in order to get to those bolts that go through the actual frame so uh, in the instructions it doesn't show that you have to take that off it shows that plate all coming out as one but we've got it out of the way now so now we need to put this back up into place we're going to be reusing the exact same bolts that we took out and uh, it does say you might want to support this with a jack but it doesn't seem to be too terribly heavy so I'm going to attempt to hold it up there while I at least get a couple started and uh, we'll see how it goes. If not, I may end up having to get a jack under there, but the problem is, is I need to be bolting about where the jack's gonna be lifting it, so I don't know how much help that's gonna be. Now, once we get those in place, I'm gonna go ahead and snug them down with the impact. Now, I don't know how crazy you can get on this. It doesn't give torque specs. I'm just gonna tighten them down nice and snug until the I can see some thread on the top side uh, because they are nylock nuts. So the next thing we need to install is the upper A-arm, which is actually gonna sandwich in the center here, which is nice. Um, because the other one was on the outside and the inside, there was actually two bolts. This is only gonna have one bolt that holds it in. And they do supply you with the new bolt. So it goes in here. It may take me a minute to get it in there, especially with everything lined up. But uh, that is our next step. So this guy goes in, you have a washer in and out on the backside, and then we will hook the shock up here. And it also gives you hardware for that. anything up I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down by hand instead of using my impact because this would be really easy to bend especially on the frame because it is aluminum 
I know I used it on the bottom, but that's a thicker part. And I just don't want to screw anything up. So, this is half inch, and of course the center is 9 16 but I wish they would have been the same size. Not a huge deal. So the next thing we need to do is thread in the hind joints. Now I've already threaded the bolt or nut on the end. And this top one threads in to your upper A arm. And your bottom one, I'm going to run this all the way down to the nut. But the bottom one comes with an extra nut to put on the back side so you have something to thread into. So the next step is to assemble your uh, spindle, which just goes on top and uh, underneath these two um, Heinz joints. And it does give you new hardware to assemble it. Now I am going to have to go to the store and buy the proper piece because it thought it was a T45, but turns out it's some oddball size. So I'm gonna have to go find a tool to put it in but I can go ahead and thread these in, and there are, is, it is marked passenger, but your passenger side is gonna have two hookups here. Your driver's side is not gonna have this little arm. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these in, and we might go a little bit further, but like I said, until I get that tool, uh, I really can't put this all together and tighten it up. I also messed up one of my joints on the other side of the stabilizer bar there. So I'm gonna have to buy another, um, I guess, you know, they're, they're kind of tie rods, I guess you would call them, but I'm going to have to get another one from the other side, for the other side as well, because when I was going to take it off the stock arms, um, it just stripped, and so obviously I'm going to have to get another one of those. So I have got a couple things assembled here. Uh, I went ahead and just tightened these down by hand, and it was a 9 millimeters is actually what it was that fits these, and so I did get one of those. And uh, other than that, I did go ahead and hook up the stabilizer bar, and the two tie rods on both sides. Now, I told you guys that I broke one. Uh, what happened was, when you loosen these, a lot of times the center of it spins, and so it was spinning, and I couldn't get it off. I couldn't get anything to clamp onto it. Well, what I ended up doing was putting a clamp around the outside and uh, was able to get it off. I did ruin the castle nut, so I got a new castle nut, and uh, turns out these are like a week away, and I didn't want to wait that long. So, uh, able to actually get a new castle nut was all I really needed. Uh, the joint itself, the actual tie rod was good, so didn't really need to replace it. I did replace the boot on the other side. I'll show you guys. I did go ahead and put this together on this side, but I'm, we're gonna talk about that on the other side. But I uh, put a new boot on and uh, that is good. This side is snugged up. So all we have to do on this side is we need to tighten the bottom of both, the, both of these hind joints. So. The nut that goes into the bottom and I told you guys earlier I was going to use some um, uh, Loctite on the Heims joint actually not the Heims joint it's the bolt that goes into the uh, spindle that I'm going to use that on but before I do that I'm going to snug this all down we're going to go to the back and then we have to align it now if the alignment calls for basically how you align it is you have a toe set like you would on a car and then you have a camber adjustment and the camber adjustment requires you spinning, uh, this one can go ahead and be tightened, but the bottom one. Now, if you can't get the camber correct on the bottom one, which I put it about in the middle, um, you have to take this all loose and thread this in or thread this out a little bit on the top side. So I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna make that the last thing I do, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels on and I do need to put the cotter key in here. Now, I'm not, I haven't taken a lot of these apart. It's been a while since I've done this. So I called my uncle and um, he, he's kind of really the one that got me into cars, to be quite honest with you. My dad's always been into cars. and uh, But my uncle has kind of always been the driving factor in me doing car stuff. Um, he just always had cool stuff. And I always uh, looked up to all the cars he had and looked up to him and always thought that um, he was always a great help. So I called him and... Uh, basically what was happening is when I was tightening this up it felt like it was bottoming out and uh, I talked to him about how tight it needs to be and he said just to snug it up where there's no wobble and so that's where we were at uh, I went ahead and snugged it up where there's no wobble it still turns you don't want it to be too tight 
And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the cotter key in. So that is uh, what I called him about. Like I said, I'm, most of the stuff I work on, this newer stuff all has uh, sealed bearings. So you don't have to mess with any of this. You just unbolt this, the stock hub assembly. But on this older stuff, like I said, I don't use it a lot. I know how to pack bearings and there was a ton of grease in here. I wasn't gonna re need to repack this. But as far as like, I don't know, just being comfortable, I wanted to uh, check with somebody that does this all the time and uh, he kind of talked me through it. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead, put the cotter key in. I'm gonna go ahead, tighten these up on the top and the bottom, which I'm just gonna snug them down for now. The cotter keys are already in both of these. We're gonna get the wheels back on and we are going to probably go ahead and put the bumper on because I don't need it out of the way to adjust anything. There's really not a whole lot to that anyway. And then we'll get it set down and we will move on to the back. The bumper on the wheels are now on so I'm gonna slide the jack under it we're gonna lift it up get the jack stands out and uh, well we're gonna move to the back well now we have this thing turned around I'm gonna shove the jack under it get it jacked up I do have the front wheels chalked uh, they do say to take it out of gear and take the brake off so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that stuff and uh, get it off the ground. We'll go ahead and put some jack stands underneath it. You don't want to put them under the rear end. Make sure you put them under the frame and uh, we'll get the back wheels off. Probably gonna have to cut this one off. As you guys know, one of those is stripped and I can't tighten or loosen it. So I'm gonna have to probably cut one of the lug nuts off, which sucks. And I'm also gonna have to replace one of the studs. So uh, I wish I didn't have to do that, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go ahead though and get this thing lifted and uh, let's get the wheel off. it is the next day and I didn't take any of the rear end apart because I had a ton of issues getting this wheel off um, like I said the wheel came loose and it had been ridden on with the wheel loose and look at my wheel studs here so I only bought two and um, well that wasn't gonna work I needed four so I went to the local parts store and found some basically ones I can use for now and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. So I just hit these with a hammer, tap those out. I'm going to pull these new ones through and uh, then we should be ready to tackle the rest of the lift kit as far as on the back. Uh, I'm just gonna pull these through with a stack of washers and an old lug nut with my impact. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on this and uh, pull them flush and we should be good to go ahead and start disassembling the rest. So now that we got those lug nuts or those wheel studs in on the other side, I went ahead and put the brake rotor back into place. Bunch of dirt on here, guys. Anyway, we need to loosen up the U-bolt and uh, make sure that you have a jack underneath this side. We're gonna start with the passenger side. We're gonna loosen the U-bolt and then we're gonna loosen the shock and you need to retain all the stuff that goes to the shock. So there's a bushing around it. Make sure that you keep that. And uh, you're also gonna be keeping, I think you're gonna be keeping this, but uh, go ahead and get this and uh, this loose. Once you get that out of the way, it swings down and we are ready to take the leaf spring out. So it is a 9 16th. The instructions say that it's metric, but nothing else on this cart has been metric and neither are these. They're 9 16 on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and knock those out and uh, get the leaf spring out of the way. Now, obviously when the leaf spring comes out of the way, the rear end's gonna wanna fall. That's why I have the jack in place. So once we get the leaf spring out, you can see that I've got the block in. It goes in between the leaf spring and we're obviously moving the leaf spring to the bottom side instead of the top. Now the angle, it says in the instructions, angles towards the front. So uh, it goes downhill towards the front is what I'm taking from that. So that's the way we're gonna hook it up. There is a little pocket here to take this centering portion. And then the next thing we need to grab is our top shock plate which is going to set on top here and we're going to go ahead and mount our shock into it so 
Um, once we get those two things into place, then there's a centering plate that goes on the bottom, which I'll show you here in just one second, and then followed by our stock bottom plate. So a little bit of a confusing part about the instructions is that this bolts to the bottom of that, and it does not. It actually bolts just like this, and then it sets in the um, old spot where the bottom here, uh, you guys can see it on the bottom of the leaf spring, it basically replicates that on the bottom, so uh, the it can't move back and forth. So I'm just gonna go ahead, tighten this down. I didn't have to, ended up not having to take that piece out. I shouldn't have taken it out, but not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead, tighten this up, and uh, put it into place. We'll put it all back together with that angle facing the front and then we'll put that bottom plate on. Now I went ahead and tightened these up and there's a couple things that you want to make sure of while you're doing this. Okay, so first thing is you want to make sure that your shock has plenty of travel. I haven't tightened that up yet. That is the next step. I'll go ahead and tighten that up and then uh, on these guys here, you want to make sure, first of all, that that's centered up top like it is. And then on the bottom, you want to make sure that this is equal. Okay, so you don't want one way longer than the other. You want to try to clamp it down equally. And then I was kind of moving this plate around, making sure it was in the center. But as long as your guide is lined up in the bottom, which ours is, then you are good to go. So now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to tighten up that. We're going to put the um, leaf spring mounts back into place which uh, I'm gonna have to lift the cart up a little for that to happen. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the other side. Okay guys, both sides are now finished. I went ahead and did the other side before I completely tighten this down. That way um, they were as close to centered as possible. I wanted to make sure that the plates were centered on the top, the bolts side to side were centered, and I wanted to put a load on this suspension before I tighten these and the front and rear of the leaf spring here. I always like to put a load on it. So I have the load on with the jack. I didn't know if I'd be able to get under it with the wheels and tires on it, but um, ultimately we are all finished. I also waited until I had a load on it with the jack to tighten up the shock completely. So everything is tight. No torque specs. Um, I just got them nice and snug. I didn't get crazy. The frame on these are aluminum, so you don't want to go crazy tightening the front of the leaf spring pocket. But the the exciting part, guys, the part that I've been waiting to show you, and uh, really the most exciting part of this is the wheels. You can see I've got new lug nuts there. I have the new studs in, and they are a little bit longer than the factory ones that I bought, but it's not gonna matter. I checked the length. We are going to be completely fine, but check this out. These are the wheels and tires that we are going to. I wanna roll, let's see here grab one of these I'll put it up beside the other one so you can see exactly what the difference is absolutely insane guys so stock tire that came on this 18 by eight and a half by eight eight inch wheel this one 22 by nine and a half by 12 what a huge difference now uh, we're gonna roll these over and at least get the ones on the back now we still have some alignment to check because that is something you have to do when you mess with the front. But I wanna go ahead and get the wheels on, and uh, once we get the wheels on, we will talk about what we're going to do with the alignment. Before we can drive it, we need to set the camber and we need to set the toe. Uh, the toe is pretty self-explanatory, but the camber, so I've got a square out here and that's how they say to do it and you want to get the wheel 90 degrees. Now the adjustment points that you have for that 
uh, are the top and the bottom. Now the bottom is a preferred method because you can tighten it without taking anything off the car. So I can loosen this nut to bring it in, to bring the bottom of the wheel in, or I can loosen it and push the uh, heim joint out, which is actually what I need to be doing. So if you don't have enough adjustment here, then you do have to take this off and thread it in or out. So hoping not to have to do that. And then once we get that in order, then we need to set the toe, which is obviously where the tires point. And it talks about the measurements on the front and the back of the tire. So uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're gonna set this. And uh, like I said, I'm just gonna loosen that up, let a little bit of the wheel come out. Now I'm gonna pull it in and out. Uh, that way the tire can settle. And then once we get that where I want it, I'll lock all those down. And then I did talk about, I'm gonna put some um, red Loctite on these guys. So I'm gonna run them back out and then put them back in once I've finished getting the alignment where I want it. Well, after rolling it in and out of the garage a couple times and adjusting it, I now have 90 degrees, touching the top and the bottom of the tire in the center. And this one is really, really close. Um, I went both ways a couple times and uh, yeah, it's, it's like super close. So I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up before I set the toe and I'm gonna go ahead, thread these out these guys here, remember that nine millimeter that I didn't have, had to go by. I'm gonna thread those out. I'm gonna put some Loctite on those, the top and the bottom. And uh, once I do that, then we will come back and set the toe. So the last thing that we need to do, I've driven it uh, up and down the road a couple times. Like I said, I did go ahead and put some Loctite in those, but we need to set the toe. Now, in order to set the toe, we need it to be a fourth to three eighths of an inch greater in the rear than it is in the front. So it needs to toe in a little bit instead of towing out, which I'm pretty sure it's doing a little bit of now. So what I've done is I've marked on my tire on the inside, on the front, and the same in the back. So what we are trying to do is we are getting it um, towed in a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna be using a tape measure, measuring both sides. Once we get that set, we'll go ahead and tighten this down. All we're doing is turning this here, this back um, line, so you loosen up these jam nuts and then turn it whichever direction you need to to get it within spec. Once you do finish that up, you can tighten up that jam nut. Check out your steering wheel. Mine happens to be straight. If it is not, you can adjust it here on this front one, uh, which you'll have to loosen the jam nuts and do as well. But mine seems to be straight. Now, if it's off, I will be doing that. But uh, after that, guys, I'm gonna pull it out, get it all cleaned up, and let you guys take a really good look at it. Well guys, it has been a couple days and I did get it cleaned up somewhat. It's not perfect, but to be quite honest with you, as soon as I clean it, my son hops on it, him and his friends go drive it around in gravel. And, uh, but oh my gosh, what a huge difference. Six inches of lift, 12 inch tire. We went from an 18 inch total diameter to a 22 inch. So, uh, you know, now I've driven it for a couple days and uh, I I'm, I'm mixed, I have kind of mixed emotions. I love the wheels, I love the tires. I think it looks absolutely great. Uh, the gold really goes with the tan. I like the tan seats. I thought about going black, but guys, this thing, when it's out in the sun, if you have a black seat, you are going to hate life. Also, we got the uh, new windshield. It's all folded down right now. But kind of things I don't like about the suspension, so I'll talk about this. And of course, like always, guys, I will list the parts that I use down below. Um, wheels, tires, the suspension that I used. This. Watch this move. Look at that A-arm, that upper A-arm move. I don't like that. But uh, it seems to be pretty stable on the road. I didn't think it was real stable the first time, but once I got everything aligned, uh, it seemed to be a lot better and I'm getting used to it. I think I'm just not used to it being so high. It doesn't seem, it actually seems a little more stable as far as um, back and forth. I think these things are pretty heavy. They'd be pretty, um, pretty hard to tip over, but the other thing I will tell you guys is when you lift one of these, and they do not say anything in the instructions about this, it's really dirty down here, but there is a ground cable that goes off the starter and bolts up here to the body. And when I first got this thing together, it wouldn't start and pull out of the garage. So I had to lengthen that cable. They do not say anything in the instructions about that. And that was a factory cable. So I know that it's probably required anytime you do a six inch lift because it's you know, it, it needs more room. And, uh, but 
ultimately that was a pretty easy process and uh, tell me what you think guys I think this thing looks absolutely incredible there is no doubt it looks better than the factory stance it, it's I really wish I could have lowered it guys you know that I'm all about lowering everything I mean every well the Buick's not lowered but everything that I have at this house is generally lowered this is the first time I've actually lifted something and uh, like I said I probably I'm, I'm kind of mixed emotions whether I would do the lift again uh, I would definitely do the wheels and tires but I might do a smaller tire and uh, the same wheels but tell me what you guys think like I said in the comments down below like always in the description I will list everything that I used and uh, kind of the overall cost involved well you'll be able to see that in the links but uh, guys if you do like this video please smash that thumbs up button like always if you're not subscribed go down and hit the subscribe button make sure you ring that bell icon that way you're notified every single time we drop a new video and well stay tuned I think we're finished with this other than I might put a light on it I'd like to put an LED on the front I think we're finished with this but stay tuned because we have tons of other projects coming